Hello, I'm Stephen Ballast. Welcome to the Honey Optics YouTube channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to color match multiple cameras in a multi-camera environment. When you're switching between multiple cameras, you want all your cameras to look the same, to have the same exposure and the same color. I usually say you don't want it to look like you've jumped to a different location when you change cameras. You want it to look like you're still in the same room. And an important step in making that happen is to color match your cameras. This video is gonna build upon two of our previous videos, setting camera exposure and setting camera color. So if you haven't watched those, you're gonna to wanna to do that first because not only will this build on the concepts we talked about in those videos, but also if you've followed those, you've already done a good portion of the work to get your cameras matched. And what I'm gonna show you now is how to make a few more tweaks to really take your cameras the rest of the way to being matched. First, some things to pay attention to from the previous videos when setting your camera's exposure and color. Make sure that your shutter speed matches across all your cameras. If a different camera angle requires a different exposure, use your iris or the luminance adjustment to dial that in. Keep the shutter speed consistent. This will give you the same amount of motion blur when something is moving in your shot for all your cameras. Another setting I would make sure is similar is your gain. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, but make sure there isn't a difference of more than one or maybe two at the most, as this affects the amount of noise in the image. And differing amounts of noise can make cameras feel like they're less matched. Finally, make sure that when you set your white balance that all your cameras are really hitting the same color temperature. Point the cameras at something white at the same time and verify they are both registering white or at least at the same point on the vector scope. You can also set the white balance in the camera to manual and set both cameras to the same Kelvin number. So those were a few things to look out for when setting up your exposure and color. Now let's look at a few tweaks to take your matching to the next level. I'm gonna be using the Color Monitor plugin in OBS to look at our cameras on a waveform monitor and vector scope so we can see exactly what we are doing to the image to get our cameras to match. You can find a link to download this plugin down in the description of this video. So if we look at each of these cameras individually, we can see that they've been set up properly. The exposure is correct and the color is okay. But when we switch back and forth between them, we can see that they're still not matching very well. The first thing we wanna match between our cameras is our black levels. If we look at the image from our camera on the waveform monitor, look at where the blacks here at the bottom of the display are falling. You can see that this camera is a bit higher and the result in our image is that it looks a little more washed out than our second camera. Here's where a bit of finesse comes in because you've already set your exposure properly for your subject to land between 60 to 80% on the waveform monitor. So we wanna adjust the black level without affecting our exposure on the subject, which is already correct for both cameras. One way to do this is using the contrast and luminance controls. In this case, we'll increase the contrast a little to get the black levels the same but keep the subject still at the same exposure. Once our black levels are set, we'll wanna match our camera's saturation levels. And again, this is assuming that first you've properly set your camera's white balance. So to do this, you can use a color chart like this, or really any colorful object in your scene that you can point both your cameras at and take a look at them on the vector scope. We can see that this camera is a bit more saturated. So we'll go into its color settings and lower the saturation slightly. and now the saturation is matching between these cameras. Finally, we wanna make sure that the hue of each camera matches. So take a look at a specific color. I usually like to use red and see where that color lines up on the vector scope. Go to the color menu and adjust the hue setting to rotate the color of a camera. And you may wanna adjust both cameras to be more accurate, but adjust it until both of the cameras line up the same. 
If you remember, adjusting the hue rotates all the colors on the vector scope. Now when we switch between these cameras, they're looking really well matched. The last tip I'll give is if you're using more than two cameras, I'd recommend matching all your cameras back to one reference camera. So in other words, if you use camera one as your reference, match camera two to one and three to one and so forth. If you match them in a chain, say one to two and two to three and three to four, each camera can still have very slight differences and by the time you get to the last camera, those differences could add up to enough to be noticeable. So just be sure to match all cameras to one reference. I hope you found this video helpful. Be sure and subscribe to our channel. We've got more useful tutorials coming to help you get the most out of your Honey Optics PTZ cameras. Until next time, bye.